Welcome back guys. I'm Adam with G2 Outdoor Adventures and today I want to take a look at the Coleman 533 camp stove. So to start off with here, I got this bag and this is a solo pot bush pot. This is a very large bush pot and it's really set up for multiple people, a minimum of two, but really even more than that. So one of the things I do with my 533 is I wrap it up in this towel here. So this pot here is a solo bush pot. Now this is a 140 ounce bush pot. So it's a very big bush pot. But now you could fit this 533 into a smaller bush pot too though. And they also make a hard and a soft cover case for it. So let's take a closer look here and we'll look at some of the features that the 533 has. So you guys can see right off the bat, this is a really sharp looking high quality stove right here. So we're here in the bottom here, this large container. So this is gonna be your fuel reservoir. And this is real similar to like your Coleman lantern that you guys might own. And this is based on a pretty old design. I think this came out in like World War II maybe. And they've been improving and changing this design over the years. So we have this large fuel canister and then we also have a fuel cap. So this fuel cap, comes off pretty easily, has a gasket inside. But this seems to be a very good high quality fuel cap here. I, I've never had it leak on me. And also these canisters, they pressure test these canisters to make sure that they would stay in the pressure that you're putting on them. Over here we have the air pump. So this is to pressurize your fuel tank here. So basically it has a hole on it, but as you draw it backwards here it's going to suck air in you want to put your thumb on this hole and as you pump it it's going to pressurize your tank once you finish pressurizing it keep your thumb on this little plunger hole here and then tighten that knob up so on this side we have this little red knob here and so this is the different positions for your stove here your grill so of course when you got it all the way up here this is your off position this will be like your simmering and then all the way to the right, or it sticks out away from the canister, this is actually gonna be on your high. We'll leave that off for right now. Then we can look at the grill itself on the top here. This all seems pretty good. This part here is actually movable. So depending on your pot, the way it fits on there, you could adjust that a little bit. And this tube here, this is actually our field generator. So what happens is as we pump this tank up, it's going to pressurize and push your fuel into this generator and at this point it's a liquid state so it's going to have liquid that comes through here and as this burns it's going to heat up your generator which is going to help your fuel turn into a gas so when you first start this you'll have a big yellow flame that comes out but as your generator heats up and converts that over to gas the gas will give you a real nice blue flame here coming out the bottom so let's go ahead and put a tape measure on this and we'll put a scale on there and see what this thing weighs and how big it is. So for our tape measure here, we're about six and three quarters tall. The bottom is five and a quarter wide. And then the top part here where your pan would actually sit or your pot, it's a little bit hard to tell, but I'm thinking it's about four and five eighths wide. And that's this outside part here. Your top piece here, where your pot would actually directly touch on, is about four and a half, which is plenty big for a very large pot. So another thing, <clears throat> let's go ahead and put this on a scale. I'll turn it towards me. You guys probably can't see that number anyways. So this canister is completely empty right now. It is coming in at two pounds and 0.3 ounces. So it's a relatively heavy stove now. So you guys could buy this fuel filter here. And basically this fuel filter has a little screen in there and it's just gonna filter out your gas. Now keep in mind, this is a multi-fuel stove. So for the most part, I try to burn white gas in mine and it doesn't necessarily have to be the Coleman white gas. It could be whatever brand you want, but you could also burn gasoline in this stove but now typically you're better off buying the cheap gas versus the expensive gas because the expensive gas actually has more additives in it. So we'll start filling this tank up here. And then when you're filling this with the white gas, if you put your mouth of your gas can towards the top, it actually pours really nice for you. So 
So now that we got this filled up, keep in mind when you're filling this, you don't wanna fill this all the way to the very brim. So we'll take our filter out, close our can up. We'll put our reservoir cap on here. But as you fill this up, keep in mind to keep it relatively low, about this height will work for you. Because when you pressurize this tank, you need to have headspace in here for the expansion of the gas for one, but also just so you can pressurize it enough so that it could burn properly while you're using it. So I think we're ready to go ahead and light this 533 Coleman stove up, but first we gotta pressurize it. So we're gonna do a quarter turn here and loosen up this rod. You wanna pump this about 25 times. Once you pump it 25 times, you can close it. And for the most part, I really don't count these pumps. I just do it until it feels like it's getting firm and I can tell it's got pressure in there. We'll keep our thumb in that hole and we'll tighten that up. So to start this, we're gonna to wanna to turn our red lever here and this is gonna open up that feel. So when we first light this, it's gonna be a large yellow flame that comes out until that generator heats up. Now, if you use gas on this, that yellow flame is gonna be more predominant and take a little bit longer to heat up. This white fuel or white gas, it's a lot cleaner of a fuel, but it's gonna leave less residue and creosol within that generator. So we'll turn this on a real low simmer here and you guys could see that blue flame. So this stove here has really good simmering capabilities here. That's about as low as we could get it. So keep in mind when you first start it too, once you get that blue flame going, we could pump this thing back up. Make sure you got enough pressure in there. So right here with that yellow flame, you could see that it's still heating that generator tube up. But the more it heats up, the more that blue flame will be more consistent. You could kind of hear the sputtering. That's the combination of like the liquid feel and it turning into a gas. We'll open this guy up. So this is fully open here. And granted, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see, but it produces a, a huge amount of heat here. And it also has a really good low setting on it. Now this generator tube, sometimes that can plug up with debris so the cleaner fuel that you burn, the less likely you'll have to clean that generator tube or replace. So my stove here, it's still too hot to touch. We're gonna to let it cool off. But another thing I thought would be worth talking about is on the bottom of this reservoir here, your fuel tank, it's actually stamped with the date. So these things are kind of expensive and they're kind of hard to find a little bit. So eBay is a, a pretty good option. But when you're buying these, keep in mind, like looking around your fuel cap for rust and then just the quality of your grill top itself. But now your generators, keep in mind that you could rebuild, you could buy new generators for it, even if those are plugged up. But now Coleman, they actually have a very good uh, warranty center as well. So when I bought my original 533 Coleman stove, when it came in and it came from an authorized dealer, I didn't buy it directly from Coleman, but it had a big old dent in the side of it. And they really must have had to hit that pretty hard to have that significant of a dent because this fuel reservoir is very, very stout. But I called Coleman up and unfortunately at the time they weren't producing the 533, so they could not replace it with another model. Also, all of their other authorized vendors or dealers, they didn't have any in stock at the time. So they couldn't replace it for a like model, but what they did do is they actually upgraded to a different stove of like value or more, but they went ahead and they sent that out to me, no charge or nothing. So it was a pretty cool deal there. I really appreciate the fact that they stood behind their products. So that's another point for me, as far as you know, dealing with a company that does have a good warranty center. So this stove here, it is pretty heavy stove though. So it's coming in at over two pounds, basically, two and a half when it's filled. But I think that this stove, you could use it as a daily backpack kind of stove, but I think a daily would be your, your maximum. If you're gonna go out for really far hikes, or you're trying to cover a lot of miles per day, I don't think this is the ideal stove for you. As far as bushcrafting goes, you know, like a daily hike, a day hike, 
car camping, overlanding, something like that. This stove here is absolutely phenomenal. I really enjoy using it. I think it'd be a strong option for you guys to, to consider it for sure. And keep in mind that multi-fuel there is really beneficial, especially when it's hard to find fuel to put in there. So even if you're going cross country, this stove here might be a good option for you. All right, guys, thanks for joining us on G2 Outdoor Adventures. Hopefully you guys like this review. We'll catch you guys next time.